What's that? Oh, you've got some new prop for today. No, 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 no. It's a, what are we doing this morning? It's glorious. You ready? I'm ready. Oh, wow. The, the most esteemed, beloved Rice Krispie Treat. This is going to be the greatest show you've ever watched. Hi, and welcome to Wake Up, where we wake up. Wake up, got treats for everybody. Well, not for everybody. I just watched you put your mitts all over that thing. Like, you actually touched every... I have mine. That's a horrible I know my thing brother. that you've just done. You literally stole the rice crispy right out of my mouth. I don't want any of that. Eat as much as you want. I'm a share. I love to share. <laughs> well, today, what are we going to do? We're, we're going to eat a Rice Krispie We're not going to talk about Rice Krispie Treats. I'm going to eat him the whole show. I can't wait to hear this just to hear you chomping. I'm going to eat gonna... the whole show <laughs> because we're off the fast. <laughs> we are. And we have a Rice Krispie Treat. And you, we're, it's this been is, a magical week. The Patriots You guys won. brought this we last night. Rice Krispie Treats. Yeah. And you didn't know I ate a pan. You ate a whole pan of them? I believe I did. Oh, my gosh. Sneaky. I kept going different places and then I would eat uh, because they were so good. They're so good. But today we're talking about oh, yeah, the food of God. <laughs> no. We do. We got a prayer for you. We got yeah. a Bible. I'm Pastor Scott. Pastor Jason. All right. And Jason gave me this scripture just because um, um, what an incredible teaching you had this weekend. Thank you. You get a chance to watch a little bit at the end. It, it just it, rocked my world. <laughs> no, it was so good. And then you laid hands on people. It was just. It was just. It was one of those moments. No, it was an. Uh, so you gave me this God scripture, sure. um, Ezekiel forty-one three. Also, he went inside and measured the doorpost. Two cubics and the entrance six cubics high, and the width of the entrance seven cubics. And when I read that, That's I not... said, "This is like a Home Depot special. We're teaching people how to build." Because I don't know what the I don't know what that is. Well, everything in the Bible. I read got it. I got nothing. Your, your version uh, is not reading. Eat what him. version are you reading? Like, what is this? What kind of? <laughs> I don't know. It's just a. Because here's the version I'm reading. Then he went to the inner sanctuary. So this is talking about the the church and the church age and the new church That's that, a big... that Jesus would build. Mine okay. didn't say that. He just said he went inside. No, this is the inner sanctuary. This is a big deal. Okay, so it is a big deal. And the tabernacle and the temple is a big deal. But this is, Ezekiel is actually prophesying about the new church age that you and I live in. But now, the he's, new Jerusalem that he's given you measurements. And so I wanted to give you measurements of my and shed. And the measures to me My shed is six foot by eight foot. Your shed? By five foot. <laughs> I thought we were just sharing measurements today. No, no this is important. Listen. Okay. And uh, so it says that the entrance to the inner sanctuary was six cubits wide. Now, cubit is a... A measurement. Well, to you just put know. six cubits worth of Rice Krispies in your mouth. You're not going to be able to talk for 30 minutes. <laughs> How did you even fit that much in there? I can't breathe. I'm just spitting it out too. <laughs> so six cubits wide, that's the gate. You know, Jesus said, I'm the gate to the inner court. Mm -hmm. To the inner court, Jesus is the gate. The, the book of Hebrews calls it uh, the curtain, which is his body which is the church. Yes. And so this whole story about the church and entering into the inner courts, that's where the Ark of the Covenant and the presence of God and the Spirit of God was. And so what, what's significant about the six cubits is six represents the works of man. A man, right? And so a, seven. a man shall work six days and on the seventh day he shall rest. And so when we see the number six in the Bible, it's, it's about the works of man. And, and under the Old Covenant, the only way to get into the inner courts was through your works. The high priest mm -hmm. had to offer certain sacrifices before he could go beyond the curtain and into that. You know, he had to go through the six cubit wide uh, area. Mm. And so it represents the works of man. But our high priest, Jesus, Jesus, he completed the works. And we were looking at, and this weekend we were looking at the book of Ruth oh, and the so six good. measures of barley that he gave Ruth right? that she didn't work for. She got them. She got it for free. And it's a symbol of the completed works of Christ, that, that uh, Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. He's the gate. And so we enter through His works. You know, Christianity is the only religion in the world that you don't get to eternal salvation or some kind of eternal can't life earn it. without good deeds. Most religions, well, all religions wait. are good deeds, and a lot of Christianity you gotta do a lot of work. You gotta is do good a lot deeds. And there's a lot, and we grew up in a few of these churches where you had to work, you had to work because you're always finding out that you lost your salvation. But because Jesus did the completed works. He did the work. And that's why the Bible says, whosoever believes. Whosoever believes. So if you're whosoever and you believe, right? And then it literally says, uh, it, it, the, Bible, the Bible says that God, God goes, no one can work their way into heaven. Yeah. 
He goes, my son didn't die on the cross for your sins so you could get up to heaven. And he used the word brag and go, I made it. I made it. I, I was good it. enough. I, I, I prayed enough. And How prideful I lived is enough. it for us to think that we could hit the bar? How prideful is it that we think that, oh, I can do it now. I can, I do, can it. do it. But that's what the, the Israelites did. They said to God, tell us what to do and we will do it. So he told them what to do just to show them. You can't do you it. You can't do it. <laughs> if you could do it, we didn't need a savior to come down and do it for us. He could have had, yeah, he could have kept Jesus up in heaven. That would be the old covenant. The old the old covenant. So, so I had a garage sale the other day. Okay. I did. And uh, I don't know where the garage sale people are. I love garage sales. I love I meeting too. the people. We grew up in yeah. garage sales. It's not about making money because I tell you what, the stuff we were selling, even Goodwill was like, no, thank you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, so I love the people you meet and people yeah. who garage sale. I love the negotiating process. Oh my gosh. It's about for sometimes like a nickel. It's not about the money. How much is this? It's 25 cents. They, are, they go, mm, <laughs> I, I could do, I could do a dime. You know, my mind, like, I don't, you can the have it for offer. free. Have it for free. But the fun in it is I won't let you have it for free. No. Because I go, well, I don't think I can let it no, go for it. it's the love of the game. I That's can't why let you it go it. for a dime. I, I got to get 20 cents out of it. And then what's next? The next process is the degradation. The, for this? For this thing? Look, Look at this it. Thing. It's falling it's, over. Is that done magic marker on this? Or what are we doing here? Yeah. I, can't, I can't pay that kind of money for this. Yeah, what do you think? Is this gold? What yeah, are you, yeah. What so are you got to go through the degradation process. There's a whole process. And then you got to build it up. You're like, well, you know what, though? This is almost an antique. I mean, but, but don't you think sometimes people are negotiating for their, their oh, Christianity? Oh, that's a great example. They're negotiating with God. Oh, I was good hey, enough. Was this good I enough? How enough. much is good enough? Hey, I, How I much do to I got to give? I How much? This. I think so. Anyways, uh, so uh, what I wanted to say, though, I, the, our, our neighbor has a gate. A lot of neighborhoods in Arizona have gates. Yeah. And so there's a gate and a code, but they open up the gate when the sun comes up. But for some reason, Saturday morning, they didn't open up the gate. The gate to what? The, our neighborhood. There's oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I thought your neighbor had it. So you hang up yard sale signs, but people can't get in to oh, your neighborhood I because there's thought. a gate. Yeah, you Now, can. our gate normally opens up in the morning. It didn't open. And so we're like, uh, so I don't know. I had nobody for like 40 minutes. Nobody came to our garage Nobody can sale. get into the... So I drive and I the gate's closed. They can't get to heaven. So I sat into the gate and everybody that pulled up, I just I have a little button yeah. and the gate opens. And so then they drive through. And then another you, car would pull up and the gate opened. And drive. You were and, Jesus. And here's the thing, all you had to do to get through my gate yeah. is show up. Was show up. And believe in the garage sale. You had to see, all you had to be doing was pursuing the garage sale. I didn't go and ask them questions about what their intentions were, were, what's your past, do you have any addictions that I should be aware of? You can get in, but uh, the little kid with the chocolate on his face, out. You didn't make it. <laughs> there was no, you showed up and I went, whoop. That's how Jesus is with us. When you what pursue a great him, example. he lets you in. He lets you in. And all you it's have to do is pursuit. believe. But the enemy wants to make you believe down the road that you can't get into the garage sale. Yeah. You're never going to enter in. You weren't good enough. You're oh, you were worthy. going 25 miles an hour while you were in the neighborhood. The speed yeah. limit's 20. Get out. Yeah, you were texting people while you're driving. People keep leaving the neighborhood because they think they fell short and oh. they drive out of the neighborhood. You're in. Stay you're in good. the neighborhood. Enjoy. Enjoy the, the goodies. Amen. We got to pray. Yeah. I'll pray over your day. Dear Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and praise you, Lord, that you are not about condemnation, but you are about love and acceptance, Lord, and that you love and accept every one of them, Lord. All we have to do to get to heaven is not be good enough because we'll never make it that way. But instead, all we have to do is believe in Jesus Christ. That's it. Mm. And then you open it up the gate, open it up the gate, and open up the gate. And it's in that atmosphere we know, Lord, that we can continue to change and be better. It's not that we have to but it's that we want to. And it's your love and acceptance that drives us in a sense to be better at life. We pray, Lord, that you bless their day, you bless their week, and that you go before them and make great things wherever they go. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, we hope you enjoyed today. Uh, we got Phil. Yeah. Oh, Phil Godot's going to be here this weekend. About Phil. Yeah. So in just a couple of days, well, the weekend, yeah. So uh, come out for that. Be in church this weekend. That's super important. If you like today's show, like it. You know, hit the little like button. Uh, eat yourself a Rice Krispie treat today. You deserve it. Remember the day the Lord has made. If you're new to the show, I will rejoice and be glad in it. Subscribe to the show because that right there is funny. God gave seed to the sower. So if God's got a vision in front of this house to advance the kingdom of God in this community and in, in the world, then what he does or his strategy to fund the house and to fund his mission. I read somewhere that at the World War II, America spent $341 billion on that war. God's at war with the kingdom of darkness, and we're the hands and feet. Somebody say amen. So there's going to be some investment of seed, but the way he funds that investment is by funding the people. So what's going to happen today is that God's about to fund you. 
the, the shackles of debt about to fall off. Okay, because that's how he works. And so we're going to talk about it and we're going to pray about it. We're going to touch wallets, we're going to touch purses, and we're going to see things break up.